Okay, so this video turned out a lot longer than I anticipated. So for those of you who are only interested in the headline figures, I'll run through those quickly now and you can skip the rest of this video. So uh, basically, if you want to choose the best tariff for the summer, then if your generation is more than 1.4 times your level of consumption, then choose Octopus Flux or Intelligent Octopus Flux. However, if your level of generation is less than 1.4 times your level of, consum of consumption, then choose Intelligent Octopus Go. For those of you who aren't able to get Intelligent Octopus Go, please skip to the end of the video where I go through some examples where you don't need Intelligent Octopus Go. And if you're interested in slightly different variations on this sort of analysis, uh, my friend Dan from Danny V Solar has done his own version of uh, this video where he compares Intelligent Go with Flux. So uh, go check that one out. And my other friend Gary from Gary Does Solar has done a, a different video again that compares Flux with Intelligent Flux. So uh, that is actually being published simultaneously with this video. So I've not seen that yet. So I don't actually know what his results are. I'm uh, very interested to see. Uh, so go check that one out as well. Um, but with all that out of the way, on with the show. Hi everyone. So it's that time of year where the heating is starting to be used less and less and the sun is coming out more and more. So we're getting more and more generation. So it's time for me to think about switching tariffs. And uh, usually what I would do is switch to Octopus Flux, um, roughly April, something along, along those lines. Um, but there's also the option of Intelligent Flux, which is a slightly different variant where uh, the uh, import and export rates are the same, um, both during the day and at the peak rate. So that's an option that I'm uh, interested to, uh, to investigate. But there's also uh, Intelligent Octopus Go, which um, is for EV drivers. I'm currently on regular Go. I can't actually get Octopus Go at the moment because I don't have a compatible EV charger or EV that would allow me to get that. But I thought it'd be interesting to just check to see how that compares to all the other options. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to try and show a, a very simple rule of thumb to help you choose between the four Octopus tariffs that I think are worth considering. So that's uh, regular Octopus Go, Intelligent Octopus Go, uh, Octopus Flux and Intelligent Octopus Flux. So those four options. What I want to do in this video is to, rather than go into all the nitty gritty details and going through like super detailed com complicated calculations to try and get the absolute best option, what I want to do is see if I can figure out a way of just having a really simple calculation using the bare minimum amount of information uh, that would allow me to make um, a basically a, a sort of sensible choice, like maybe not necessarily the absolute optimum, but a reasonably good choice that means I know I'm not making like a really suboptimal decision. So that's what I'm going to try and do. So let me show you what I've done and uh, let's take it from there. So I've been thinking about this and I realized that there are actually only a few pieces of information that you need in order to get a very basic calculation for how much a particular tariff is going to cost you um, as long as you make a handful of assumptions. Now I'm going to run through these assumptions now and explain um, what the consequences of those are and the limitations. So the first assumption is that you have a home storage battery and that it is big enough to support your house base load uh, energy use for one whole day. So in other words, you're able to charge it up completely um, overnight during off-peak periods and then use all of that stored energy to uh, support your house uh, energy use for the rest of the day, regardless of how much solar you get. Um, and that means that all your consumption will be at an off-peak rate if you're able to charge during the, that off-peak rate. So you can charge your battery up fully uh, during that off-peak rate and then use that to, to support your entire consumption using off-peak electricity. Then any uh, generation you get from your solar will automatically get exported, right? So this is this is the this is a bit of a uh, an odd assumption uh, you might think, but let's assume that your house is t you're totally running off your batteries. That means all your generation is getting exported. Uh, now that might not necessarily be the case in all situations, so uh, I'm, I'm going to explain some of the other uh, consequences of that in a minute. But um, that's that's my third assumption is that all of your generation will get exported and not only that but half of that exported generation will get exported at the day export rate and half the remaining half will get exported at the peak rate peak, peak export rate so this is relevant for um, tariffs like octopus flux and intelligent flux where you have a peak export rate which is higher than the day rate uh, for go and um, intelligent go 
the export rate is flat during the day. So actually, this these two assumptions, four and five, well, make no difference because um, the export rate is the same regardless of the time of day. So all of your export will then obviously happen at that particular rate. So that's fine. Um, but uh, for flux and octopus and um, intelligent octopus flux, uh, you need to make the assumption that you're you're exporting some of it during the day and some of it during the peak. Uh, so I reckon half and half is about right. That may not be quite right for you. So um, you can make that adjustment and uh, uh, and uh, see how that changes things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, make my spreadsheet available uh, in the description. So feel free to to grab a copy, take your own copy, and um, and then uh, you can change the, the the calculations there if you really want to uh, fiddle with things. You can do that. Um, uh, but the final assumption is that the uh, the tariff uh, values that I'm using are reasonable estimates for what's going to happen in April. So currently, um, the uh, the tariffs are going to change in April, and I don't know exactly what the rates are going to be. Now, I've made the assumption uh, that all of the import and export rates for um, for flux are going to decrease to about eighty five percent of what they currently are in March. Uh, for Go and Intelligent Go, uh, the day import rates are going down, but as it turns out, that's irrelevant. So, uh, um, because obviously, I'm assuming all of your consumption is at off-peak rates, but the off-peak rates for Go and, in, and Intelligent Go are staying the same. So, uh, nine pence per kilowatt hour for Go and seven and a half pence per kilowatt hour for uh, Intelligent Go. So, those are, as far as I can tell, those are staying the same um, from now until um, April as well. Uh, but um, for flux, I'm assuming all of the, all of the export and import rates will decrease down to 85% of their current levels. So those are my current assumptions. So what are the consequences of, of those assumptions? Well, firstly, it means all you need to know is your total consumption value and your total export value. You don't really need to know exactly what your half hourly profile looks like or anything like that. Um, you just need the sum of your consumption over a particular month, for example, and the sum of your expected generation over a particular month. And those are the only two values you need. Uh, for the tariffs, you actually only need three values because obviously all of your consumption is at off-peak times, which means that the only tariff uh, that you need to know in terms of your uh, import rate is the off-peak rate. And uh, you only need uh, the peak and the day export rates, as I explained, um, obviously Go and Intelligent Go have a flat export rate and Flux uh, has a day and a peak export rate. So you, th those are the only two things you need to know um, in terms of uh, the tariff is your off-peak import rate uh, and the export rates both uh, day and uh, during the peak. So that's it, that's all you need to know. So given that I'm making a number of assumptions, uh, this does help simplify the calculation a lot, but it does mean there are some limitations. So I, it would be remiss of me to not briefly explain what those limitations are. Um, so the first one is that for regular Go, this uh, this particular set of assumptions doesn't quite give you the optimal calculation for the summer um, because the export rate is slightly lower than the off-peak import rate, which means actually during the summer you're better off not filling your battery overnight. You're actually better off using solar to uh, to run your consumption during the day because um, there's a, a one pence difference between the import and the ex uh, the import overnight rate and the export rate um, for for Octopus Go. Now it turns out that actually doesn't make much of a difference. It's not really a big deal um, for various reasons, uh, not least because Intelligent Go is just a better version of Go straight up. The export rate is better, the import rate overnight is better, uh, which means that Go is essentially never the optimal choice. If you can uh, get Intelligent Go, you're always better getting Intelligent Go rather than, than Standard Go. Um, so actually that first limitation isn't too big a deal unless you can't get um, Intelligent Go. And actually um, even then uh, during the summer, it turns out that, that Go isn't really the right uh, choice for the most, of the most of the time anyway. So I'll show you the full chart in a minute. Um, but uh, the other limitation is that um, for Intelligent Go, this effectively assumes that all of your consumption uh, is happening at the off-peak rate, um, 7.5 pence per kilowatt hour. But during the day, if, you're, if you've got some solar and that's running your house, then effectively you're missing out on exporting that at 15 pence per kilowatt hour. So um, really you could argue that, that that assumption of running your house purely from battery isn't really realistic. 
However, you can sort of make it work by ex force exporting one day's worth of, of your consumption from your battery during the day at the export rate. And that kind of balances it out, which means that the total calculation then works out as if you were always consuming at the seven and a half pence overnight rate and all of your generation then gets exported. Hopefully that sort of makes some sort of sense because um, uh, you're, 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 ex you're exporting some of, the, some of the power that you imported overnight at the export rate and then you would be balancing that with consuming from solar. So it all works out. Uh, trust me, I hope, I hope that makes sense. Uh, right, so uh, the final limitation is that um, the current tariff for standard Octopus Flux uh, has the overnight import rate quite similar to the day export rate. And that means that my, my assumption that you're running uh, all of your consumption at the off-peak rate is roughly okay for, for standard uh, Octopus Flux. Uh, if those uh, particular rates change, if the overnight flux rate uh, import rate changes relative to the daytime export rate significantly, then this assumption will start to break down. As it stands, because they're quite similar at the moment, I think that assumption is reasonably valid. So with all that in mind, all of those assumptions and limitations and everything else, what does that mean for my particular situation um, with my particular consumption profile during the year and my particular generation profile? So I have prepared a spreadsheet, as you would expect, and a lovely new chart. So let me show you that chart. By the way, if you're not yet with Octopus Energy and you wish to switch, uh, feel free to use my referral code, which is scrolling across the top of the screen right now. And if you do that, when you join, you'll get £50 credited to your account, and so will I, which uh, helps support the channel. Thank you very much. So this is a reasonable approximation of our consumption and generation profile across the year. You can see that in the winter we consume quite a bit because we have an electrified heating system. We have an air-to-air -air heat pump system that does our heating for us. It drops down to a sort of stable baseline level during the summer where it's roughly the same from one month to the next. Um, and the generation clearly is very low in the winter and peaks up around June and July in the summer. So I took these values for consumption and generation for each month and I put them through all four tariffs using the assumptions that I explained earlier and I came up with a cost uh, for each of those tariffs for each month. So this is the cost chart for our particular consumption and generation um, over the year for the four different tariffs. The values for Go and Intelligent Go over the winter are probably not quite right. They're, they're a little bit too optimistic I'm going to say because really I'm going to be consuming some peak power during the, uh, the the coldest months, so you know December and January probably at, le at the very least, which means that these values um, that I'm showing here are probably a bit too generous. They're going to be a bit more up in this direction. Um, but let's not worry about that because we're actually, this video is uh, worried about the summer months and what the best tariff is for the summer rather than the winter. So let's not worry about that bit. Um, but it looks to me that uh, according to this chart, it's basically time for me to switch. Um, we're coming up to the end of March and by the time we get to April, it looks like Go is clearly the worst choice for me. Uh, in fact, any of the other three uh, tariffs would be a better choice. Now clearly I can't get Intelligent Go at the moment, so that leaves Flux or Intelligent Flux. And amazingly, Flux and Intelligent Flux are extremely close to each other. Um, the, the yellow line is actually hidden behind the green line there. Uh, and for the rest of the summer, it looks like Intelligent Flux for me is actually the best choice all the way through to, well, at least September. Uh, and by the time we get to October, it looks like Go uh, becomes uh, a better option, in fact. So it looks to me like my choice is reasonably clear. I should switch to Intelligent Flux at the start of April and run all the way through to the end of September, at which point I should switch back to uh, regular Go but if Octopus suddenly starts supporting the Give Energy EV charger, which is the one that we've got uh, for their Intelligent Go tariff, then I might actually be able to switch to Intelligent Go instead in October, and that would then be the best choice for the rest of the winter. Uh, failing that, regular Go would be fine, but um, I would much prefer it if I can get onto Intelligent Go at that point. That would be really good. So if anyone from Octopus is, uh, is watching, please let me know when you're planning on getting the uh, Give Energy Charger uh, integrated into the Intelligent Go tariff. That would be uh, super helpful. 
So um, interestingly, I discovered that uh, the intelligent flux tariff is better than the regular flux tariff for me for most of the summer. I was surprised by this. My assumption before I did this analysis was that maybe intelligent flux would be best in June and July, but either side of that, probably regular flux would be better. But of course, this does assume that uh, Octopus will run my battery system you, you know, via the intelligent flux tariff in a way that is compatible with the assumptions that I've made. That uh, assumption is yet to be determined. So what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to assume that that's roughly going to be what's going to happen. I'm going to switch to intelligent flux and let you know how they run it, basically. So I don't know how they're going to run my battery system. So if, if you're not aware of, of intelligent flux, it's uh, open to people with give energy battery systems like we've got and you basically hand over control to Octopus to run your battery for you. So they will charge up your battery when it's um, reasonable for them to do so, when the, when the grid is full of green energy, and then they will force export your battery during the peak period uh, when the grid is in need of uh, more low carbon energy, because during the peak you tend to need to put on gas power plants and things like that. So offsetting that with stored battery energy is, is beneficial to the grid helps reduce the uh, the carbon intensity of the grid and uh, smooth out that uh, that demand curve uh, and in exchange for that you get a really good export rate so that's why you get a really good uh, really low uh, cost well you can see it's negative here which means they would be paying me during these months uh, they would be paying me quite a bit of money each month uh, for the uh, the privilege of them being able to run my battery system but if I wanted to control the batteries myself, I would choose regular flux and I would lose out a little bit during the summer. But maybe if uh, I have more control over it, I'm able, I might be able to put more of that export into the peak periods. So it all depends on how Octopus choose to run my battery system during, during, that, uh, uh, during those summer months. So if it turns out that they're running it in a weird way that I don't agree with, then I can easily switch back to flux. That's no problem. But I will report back. I will let you know how it goes during the summer. So that's the answer for me, um, switch to uh, Intelligent Flux in April and back to Go or Intelligent Go in October. So it's all good and well me saying, well, this is the clear choice for me, but what about everyone else out there who uh, doesn't necessarily have the same consumption and generation profile as me? Well, through doing this analysis, I've come up with a, a couple of simple rules of thumb that I think more or less anybody could apply that you could then use to help you make the decision between uh, which tariff to choose. So here is my simple rule of thumb that I think anybody can apply to get a reasonably good answer as to which tariff to, uh, to pick. If your generation is greater than 1.4 times your level of consumption, then you should choose either flux or intelligent flux during the summer months. If your generation is less than 1.4 times your consumption level, then you should choose Intelligent Go. That is, of course, assuming that you can get Intelligent Go. If you were unable to get Intelligent Go, then you would switch from Regular Go to Regular Flux once your generation exceeded 0.5 times your level of consumption. And then you would switch from Regular Flux to Intelligent Flux once your generation exceeded 1.25 times your level of consumption. So that's it. You can have a nice sit down and a cup of tea safe in the knowledge that you've made a reasonable decision and at least it's not completely suboptimal. Now I'd like to uh, emphasize once more that this is absolutely not going to give you the perfect optimized answer. This is a very basic calculation using some pretty broad assumptions that you may, may or may not agree with. Um, if you don't agree with them, uh, please do your own calculation using whatever method you prefer. The idea of this video is to help provide a sort of simple rule of thumb. Uh, if you want a much more detailed and optimized calculation, this is not uh, the, the answer for you. I would also like to note that if the tariff prices change in any way, then this rule of thumb will also change. If the prices go up or down, then that multiplier of 1.4 is very likely to change depending on what the relative changes in the tariff rates are. So uh, please feel free to grab the spreadsheet and put in the latest tariff prices as and when they come through, uh, just to double check for your own purposes and um, what your particular choice uh, should be. I hope you found that useful. If you're not already subscribed, I'd appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel out. But for now, that's all I got for you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.